Hi, this is Mr Evans. This video is going to look at how to interpret the average rate of return, uh, which is one of our methods of invest, um, investment appraisal. Um, and the previous video looked at how to calculate uh, average rate of return. So just to remind you, the average rate of return is a method of investment appraisal. Um, investment appraisal being the means by which the managers in the company assess the potential um, uh, financial viability of a, 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 a project and investment and at the average rate of return or annual rate of return it's sometimes known as uh, calculates the annual profit generated by a project as a percentage of the initial investment so what we need to do to uh, calculate it is use this formula there are three steps which I went over in the prior video first of all we calculate the profit over the lifetime of a project so we had an example where a project earned 127.5 million uh, pounds over its um, three-year lifespan. Then we worked out the average profit per year, 127.5 million divided by three, gave us an average annual profit of 42.5 million. Uh, but what we wanted to do was work out the average annual return which is the profit per year divided by the initial outlay times 100, which gave us an um, average rate of return of 8.5%. Okay, so <coughs> now that we've calculated that and we know how to do it, we need to un uh, make sure we understand the figure that we have calculated. So first of all, the higher the rate, the better. The higher the uh, the profitability of a project, obviously, the more attractive it becomes. And this is a good way of comparing two potential profit, uh, projects. If we've got two potential investments, each one requiring a different outlay of cash, each one earning a different amount of profit, well, we can put the figures into the uh, average rate of return calculation and we can compare them. And generally, we'd go with the one that was the highest uh, that gave us the highest annual return. Businesses would want to see a significantly higher return than the interest rate. Well, what do I mean by that? We can calculate the reward for a risk and it's the average rate of return minus the interest rate. So in, let's just take an example where the interest rate is 1.5%. The average rate of return in the um, in the calculation we've just looked at was 8.5%. We subtract 1.5% um, from that because why would businesses want to see a significantly higher return than the interest rate? Well, if the project was only returning 2% or so, um, the reward for risk was only be 0.5%. The reward for risk on this project, 8.5% compared to doing nothing and keeping the um, uh, money in the bank, is seven uh, percent the reward for risk is basically um you know investments are risky there's no guarantee that we're going to make this profit it's far safer for businesses to keep their money in the bank so we would want a significant reward for the risk that we're taking if we've got 500 million pounds that's quite a lot of interest we're risking losing by investing it in a project um so that is how we interpret ARR. Uh, if we've got two projects, we probably go with the one that gives the highest return, unless there's significant um, other factors that we might need to consider, such as consumer response to the um, uh, the two projects. Um, and we want to see a significantly higher return than the interest rate. So what are the advantages of using the average rate of return? Well. If we compare average rate of return to our previous um, uh, method of investment appraisal, payback, uh, this one focuses on profitability rather than just when the um, money will be paid back. Remember the payback period, only uh, that calculation only tells us when the money is going to be paid back and it doesn't look at the profitability of the project. Um, this one focuses on the lifetime of the project. So we see how long the project is going to go on for. Um, in the payback example, we, we knew it was going to be um, paid back after two and a half years, two, two years, six months, I think it was. Um, but that was all we considered. Up, up, well, after that, we didn't know what happened to the project. 
ARR, we focus on the lifetime of the project and, and, and so not only does it focus on profitability, it also focuses on how long the investment is going to go on for. And of course ARR can be used to compare the profitability of different potential investments which I've mentioned. However, um, it ignores the timing of the cash flow. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, if the cash flow from a project is weighted towards later years, um, that would probably put off investors. What I mean by that is if, if it's um, the return from an investment are earned not after one or two years, but three or four, well, there's all sorts of things that can go on. There's unforeseen circumstances that can happen. And of course, um, there's the impact of interest rates and inflation, which means that the money coming in after four or five years isn't as valuable as that money today. So ARR just takes the average uh, annual profit and doesn't take into account when that money is actually coming in. Money coming in in the near future is usually seen as more valuable than money coming in in the distant future because of the um, uncertainty that it's going to arrive and uh, the impact that interest rates and the combined impact of interest rates and inflation might have on that. Um, and it relies on the accuracy of forecasts and data, okay? So we're saying, oh, oh, it's all very well, we're gonna get, you know, this much cash inflow over these years, and this is gonna be the cost, the outflow. Um, yeah, we, we don't know that. That, that, that's not for sure. It's based on the projection, the reliability of our forecasts, which of course uh, may not be accurate. So that average rate of return. Um, next method of investment appraisal is net present value.